Now we all know Olympus makes fantastic photo cameras and the video footage looks really good when you're outside in the sunshine, in the wild, but what if you're in the studio? Can you use an Olympus camera to get great colors coming out of it? In the studio? You tell me. You're looking at it right now. Now I am loving my Olympus EM1 Mark II and when I was doing a stability test some people were nice enough to compliment me on the colors I was getting outside when I was shooting the footage and the thing is that was mostly just the Olympus camera. I was using a natural profile, pretty much standard settings. I did a few tweaks in post and I got the image where I wanted to. But it's a different story when it comes to the studio. If you use the natural profile in the studio, it looks something like this. Now this is the natural profile with the proper exposure, but as you can see, it's just, it's missing that detail. It's missing that softness. It doesn't look as filmic if you will, it's just not right. And I don't like the way this looks. And so I'm very happy that I was able to find the other method. And let's go back to that now. Why? Why suffer through this? Now, personally, I don't like that look at all compared to what you are looking at right now. So what are you looking at right now? How did I achieve this look? It all goes back to uh, Paul Leeming and his corrective LUTs. Now you see, I use Paul Leeming corrective LUTs for my Sony cameras and also for my GH5 camera. For any Panasonic camera I have, I will use those LUTs as well. And I really, really like the footage that I get out of those cameras, especially the GH5 with the 10-bit and the V-Log. So I was thinking, was there any way to emulate that sort of look where I get technically accurate colors coming out of the Olympus camera and then maybe I can color grade it a little bit after that. And I did just that and it's pretty simple, but I will show you some side-by-sides right now. This uh, over here is the Panasonic GH5 in 10-bit with V-Log and a Paul Leeming corrective LUT put on top of it. Now, what you're looking at is a very similar look in my opinion. The, this image that you are looking at right now, I think competes very much with the image over here with the GH5 and better than compete, it's nice to be able to match the cameras. That's one of the reasons I loved the Paul Leeming LUT is that it matched my Sony camera to my GH5 camera and now maybe to my Olympus camera. So let me clear it up for you, uh, A, in case you don't know. The Paul Leeming, it's a lot of people when they say LUTs, they just move some colors around and then they, they, they save the file and then they call that a LUT, a lookup table. But what Paul Leeming does, it is not a color grade. It's not something to make your footage look a certain way. It's to get technically accurate colors, especially when you're shooting in something like a log profile, then it can convert that log profile to uh, Rec 709 for you know your standard use, but your colors will come out nice and accurate, and then you're free to color grade the crap out of it if you want because you are at a perfect starting point. Now, Paul Leeming doesn't make one for the Olympus cameras, which bummed me out a bit until I thought a little deeper. Now, here's the thing, and also, Paul Leeming charges money for his LUTs. Not a lot, it's actually a very good deal. I got the entire Panasonic uh, G series for my cameras for 30 pounds. Now, if you wanna buy one LUT, then it'll cost you 20 pounds. So, I mean, and he's British, that's why it's in pounds. And um, I, I think it's a better deal to get the whole package. But you're saying, well, why you still can't buy for the Olympus? What are you talking about purchasing? Here's the thing. Since I already had the lot, I decided why don't I try the G series, the Cine D profile that, that Paul Leeming's lot on the Olympus camera. Hmm? And it worked. This is what you're looking at with a few tweaks. And I will tell you what these tweaks are now. Okay, so uh, first of all, the Olympus shoots in 8-bit footage and the Cine D profile for Paul Leeming's uh, corrective LUT for in Cine D, you can use that on 8-bit footage. That's where I thought, well, maybe it'll work on the old Olympus camera. Now, like a yogi in a forest, you got to be on your ohm log. You got to be on OM log 400, leave everything at zero but you really need to white balance. You need to white balance manually to get the perfect white balance. The Leeming LUTs depend very much on getting the right 
white balance. And then you expose one stop over on your Olympus camera. Now, if you're like me and you have a Ninja 5 recorder, because I got money coming out my butt, then you can uh, use the skin tones on your on your uh, your reference monitor there and you get 80% zebras on your face and then you know that that is the correct exposure for the leaming LUT. Now if you don't have a monitor, like I said, just do a one stop overexposed on the OM Log 400 and you are good to go. And then a couple of tweaks to exposure and I use this little chart here on my X-ray color checker to make those tweaks, then you can make the footage line up very well. But if you don't have a color checker, don't worry, I will give you a free LUT of mine that you can stick on the Paul Leeming LUT to correct the exposure properly so that you will basically have a Leeming LUT for your Olympus cameras. You're welcome. I just, you know, I do it for the people. But if you're someone who likes to do it on their own, let's go to the old computational box and I'll show you how I did it. What I want to do is go to the Leeming Lut website, load it up here, and uh, you scroll down, you see all the cameras that you can put the Leeming Lut on, and unfortunately Olympus is not one of them, but here's the Panasonic G series, and uh, I use, I bought the whole pack because I have a GH5, but if you want, you can save yourself a couple of bucks and just get the Cine D pack, or the Cine D LUT right here. And then of course, add to carts, you know how to buy things, right? And now we'll go back into our software. So we're here in Final Cut, I've got my two clips loaded up. This is the Olympus right here, and before I've applied the LUT or any adjustments, and also the GH5 with the V-Log. As you can see, the V-Log is a much flatter profile, and uh, we'll match those things, don't worry. So here we go, we got the Put in the camera LUT, I will choose, of course, the Paul Leeming Cine D for this guy. And now for my, my clip in the GH5, I will choose the V-Log profile. And now, as you can see, they are still a ways off. And you can do that by adjusting the exposure. Or you can do the easy thing, which is just use the LUT that I have given you uh, in the description. So I'll just use my custom LUT here and I will apply my custom LUT and that is the Leeming LUT match for Cine D. And now the LUT is much closer to the uh, GH5. And that's pretty much it right there. Now, you have, I would suggest if you know how and then uh, you go ahead and do the adjustments yourself. And I can show you how to do that. I'll take my custom LUT off and then I'll just make the adjustments by hand here. So I'll draw a mask. Okay, around my exposure tools here. And now you see over here, these things should be lining up better. I should have my middle gray under 50 and probably my whites a little higher. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So let's go with my exposure tool. I'll drag down the middle gray, but I have to put up my, and now I'll put that back up and middle gray back down. And these levels here, they look, uh, there we go, that looks pretty good. And now if I take my mask off, you will see how much more contrast is put in. And then it looks a lot more like the Leeming LUT. Now, I did notice the Leeming LUT uh, has a bit more red. And just to match the Leeming LUT specifically, I did add in some reds to my face right here. So I added that by going with my color curves right here. And then I raised my red just a little bit. Okay. And then there they are. Not too bad. And of course, this is just rough as I'm just showing you right now. And uh, you can do that as, as much as and you don't have to add the red. If you don't want to, you can do uh, whatever you want. It's, it's just to show you that you need to use the exposure to get the same type of contrast and punch as the Leeming LUT. Now, I'm not generally done there because it's still a little washed out when you compare it 
to uh, my normal graded footage. So I like to grade it a little more, but that uh, that's to your taste. You can do that. I'll just add the color wheels and uh, I'll put down my blacks a little bit, and my highlights up, and my midtones down, just to make it, you know, a little punchy. Well, that's a little much, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, let's bring the, uh, the midtone back up a little bit there. Oh, and one more thing, just to prove how accurate these colors are when you stick on the Paul Leeming LUT, I'll draw a mask around the um, color swatches here. And I'll bring up my vector scope. And uh, check it out. All of the arrows are pointing pretty close to where they need to be pointing. So I'll just uh, up the saturation on my color board just so you can see what it looks like. See, now I see the lines and how they're all going in other places. Now, if you wanted to be a stickler and make sure your colors were absolutely pristine, you actually could do that by using, uh, here in Final Cut, I uh, use the hue saturation curve, click on this little eyedropper, and then uh, look at that, that yellow one seems a little out of place, so I'll click on the yellow, and then I'll adjust that, see, woo! I'll adjust him to over here, the blue, looks a little out of place. So we'll get the blue right there. Oh, at magenta, he, he's creeped over here. Let's get that magenta. Where are you, buddy? There you are. And yeah, put him in the right spot. And the green, he is tiny bit down that way. And I oh, can't forget about the cyan now. Can we forget about you, cyan? No, we cannot. And then uh, just just red, just for the hell of it. Put them right in the middle of the box. Okay, now let's go back to our color board and reset my exposure. And now let's see what that looks like when I take off my mask. Ooh, so pretty. See that? Thanks to Paul Leeming, now I have really great skin tones, if I don't say so myself. And all of my colors uh, are matching really well to the real life colors and uh, that's one of the reasons i really like using the leaming lot and that's why i'm really glad i was able to use it for the olympus and um yeah well there you go i will write the steps in the description below but in a nutshell you just go into om log 400 uh you overexpose one stop you set your white balance manually then you slap the paul leaming lut the cine d leaming lut for the panasonic g series on the camera and then you adjust your um, exposure a little tiny bit or you can slap on the free lut that i am providing in the link below as well so if you like this video uh, give it the old thumbs up you know uh, leave a comment don't forget to subscribe i am super impressed with this camera i tell you it can really do it all it's got the stability it's got the autofocus and now that i can use it in the studio it has a little more noise than the uh, gh5 in this environment if you look in the background you will see a little bit of uh, dancing noise and um I clean that up in post a little bit usually. I left it alone for this video. But other than that, I am really, really liking the colors that I am getting out of the Olympus cameras. It matches all my other ones. Have at it. Tell me how it goes in the comments below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Okay, bye-bye.